How are you all? Uh, the car windows are all steamed up for me doing Barry Gilmore screaming. On the other channel, now, uh, passionate performer. Uh, before I start on this topic, uh, I want to remind people, if you don't know, that my 2020 uh, Moss Upon Stones Sacred Landscapes calendar is out. Not only does it have nice pictures that I've taken myself with proper cameras, I don't stick a... I don't stick a... Uh, and phone up and take a picture. Look at that cigarette in Sri Lanka. Uh, and just click uh, there. You know, I take a. I I'm a serious about photography as I am about painting. I didn't get much painting done this year because for lots of reasons. And next year I will. So people were begging me for a calendar. So this one is uh, with photographs of places I talk about. I go to and have been inspired by. And uh, it also has all the dates of all pagan festivals and blots and other kinds of things like that. Uh, and if you're interested in that kind of thing, uh, you can support me by buying it and fill your year full. Fill, make sure you fill it all up with happiness and uh, and creativity. Uh, since they changed the algorithms on YouTube, I get so little now from uh, advertising because what they do is it's all restricted and you don't come up with search engines like you used to and loads of people are complaining that they're not getting notifications anymore. This is because YouTube want to go completely mainstream like the, the Disney Channel and the fellas like me are just not important to anyone. So uh, make sure to subscribe, always make sure to this, this, the Thomas Sheridan Channel and Beyond Room 313 to not only subscribe to all three of them, but also to click the notification bell. That's very important. That way you never miss. This at the bottom of each video, you see a little picture of a bell. And that way you'll never miss the next videos as they're coming up. Because it seems to be that the, the algorithms have actually stopped, switched off the notification bells. And you have people have to go back in again and re-click them. Because that's what I, the, the channels that I follow, that's what happened to me. Uh, so, um, you know, unless they were bullshit channels like ESPN or something like that, I have to go back in and re-notify, so do that. So if you want to help me out with that, that's great. I give you tons of information, I ask for very little, and, uh, you know, it's art. It's not like I'm just asking you to give me a donation or anything. It's actually, you're getting something tangible for your, for your work. So, uh, yeah, here we go, paganism, and in the news lately. It's, uh, I knew this was coming for a while, and I knew they would ramp this up, and I knew it was coming because... They don't know what to do with us. Now, I've been following same Pope Francis' tweets and his messages and his, and his emails and his blog, or whatever you want to call it, on the Vatican site. And he's become, this Jesuit has become increasingly hostile towards pagans. Now, this is one of the reasons why they, the Vatican is trying to co-opt the, uh, the environmental movement or get involved in Extinction Rebellion and all these types uh, because they're very worried as are the leftists, as are the globalists, as are all Abrahamic religions, that people who get involved in climate issues might say feck it and end up becoming pagans through the environmental aspect. This is a real worry for them and that's why they're gluing themselves, like they're falling over themselves to be attached towards this. And he, uh, we, we the recent thing with the Pachamama thing and they've thrown to the Tiber in Rome. But it's not only that. If you go to the, the Vatican website, there's, there's literally now constant attacks on pagans. Uh, they're really frightened because our numbers are growing. A friend of mine in Holland showed me a news article where a, a very, a, just a harmless uh, jumper, sweater as you Americans call it, with runic symbols on it, very nice jumper too, was taken out of the shops. And because it was deemed racist. So that's how they're going to get the, anything to do with Nordic or runes or anything to do with Germanic paganism. They're going to de declare it to be uh, racist because it's, it's white nationalist. But this has been going on for a while. The Southern Poverty Law Center actually claims the Celtic cross is a, is a racist hate symbol. So we've been dealing with this for a long time now. But they're going to ramp it up because... They can't own us. They we they can never own us. So they're going to have to not only stigmatize us further and further. Now that came to light with a thing that happened in the UK, where social workers, in ironically and interestingly enough, the cities where all the grooming gangs happened, the Islamic grooming gangs happened, in the north of England, decided that pagans. Where, well, they didn't say it actually, to be fair to them. They were talking about female genital mutilation in 
a certain immigrant communities and its relation to witchcraft, but they never mention its relations to Islam. But anyway, I guess side point. The papers like The Independent and The Guardian then spun the story around to make it sound like all witchcraft is now in trouble and being watched. This kind of, a lot of this kind of nonsense is going on. Another aspect too is that last week, last weekend, sheep were found mutilated in the, in the New Forest in England with swast, uh, with uh, pentagrams poured into them and there was other kind of graffiti like Satan rules and stuff left on church. I would probably bet money that they were done by evangelical Christians uh, to stigmatize this. We hear, you see these kind of things happen all the time that to stigmatize uh, pagans because, again, of the growth in paganism. And the fact that they, a real pagan wouldn't associate the pentagram with Satan and a satanic person or a, a d- devil worship inclined person wouldn't be interested in doing things like that, like putting a killing a sheep and putting a pentagram on it they would burn down the church uh, or things like that and it would be much if they were going to do anything if which they don't they're usually they're nearly always law-abiding citizens now <clears throat> so it's on you know it's on it's happening all the time and the reason is they're afraid of us it's quite simply that they're afraid of us if you read my book the druid code i i reviewed a letter written by a priest in the in the parish of Ferns, the Ossus of Ferns in the southeast of Ireland, c- claiming that the growth in paganism was a return to human sacrifice and mutilation, and then gave the example of the few bog bodies, the handful of bog bodies that have been found around Europe from the Celtic times, as proof of how murderous and barbaric Celtic people, pagan people were, without mentioning that the witchcraft trials and the Inquisition and the the witch burnings of the Protestant countries and the holy wars ever and the Crusades. So this is what you were dealing with. And it was it was vicious this this article and this letter by this priest down in Ferns. And to the point where if it was anyone else they'd be done for hate speech. If it was any other religion he'd be done for hate speech. But it's okay, you can attack a pagan. You can attack you can attack us. We're fine. We're fair game. And they're increasingly connecting us to Satanism. This is the thing. They're trying to start a second satanic panic, but they wanted a pagan panic, which is ironic because the term panic comes from the god pagan, the pagan god Pan, and a, well, <laughs> a hysteria that was created by the presence of Pan in the... And so it's, it's really ironic, actually, but it's even, even the thing that they're trying to get us with is paganism. You can never escape paganism. It's everywhere. And that's my prediction for 2020. They're really going to ramp up the anti-pagan stuff. But it won't last. It won't work. It won't get anywhere. And it's uh, it, you see it. It's it, Paganism is growing. And like, it, in some countries like the, Brazil, that lunatic right-wing government there, how we're brandishing Bibles saying that they were going to eradicate paganism and put Christianity at the center of Brazilian life again and all this nonsense. Uh, Brazil is a country where paganism never went away. And but it's it was it's resurging greatly among the youth and young people, and all the people are returning to it. The same here in Ireland, and same everywhere else. I say England, Germany, the lot. It's happening everywhere. So the stigma, the stigmatism will be two from two fronts. One, it will be deemed racist. You're you automatically will be considered a white nationalist racist if you're a pagan, and then they'll have, the likes of the Southern Love Poverty Law Center will whip out swastikas and ruins and. You know, helms and Celtic designs, Celtic triscals and uh, Celtic crosses and spirals, and they'll be saying that that's all some symbols of hate, and that that'll be used like what'll happen with the sweater in the shops in Holland, and the other aspect will be that they will have a pagan panic, and they will try to because you see. A lot of people are more educated now because of the internet than they were during the previous satanic panic, and plus the previous satanic panic was so unbelievably absurd that you just look at those people now and they're hilarious. But that demographic, that extreme Christian <clears throat> and atheist, the huge number of atheists involved in this, would be going after the pagans as well. Because remember, no one can own us. We want nothing. We're not interested in a political life, a political solution. We want nothing. We don't, we're not even involved in the, the climate change thing because we know that the earth is not in danger, that the earth is perfectly safe. And uh, it can, you know, because the people, like I, said, like I said last week, the most detached person on this planet from nature is a climate change activist because none of them actually have any contact with nature. 
And that, those of us who do, who walk in the woods, walk in the forest, know that everything is fine. It's just that they're making people who only know nature through wildlife documentaries and David Attenborough and people like that afraid. But we know this planet and this Gaia is incredibly powerful and can take us back. Now, we had a new moon last night, I think it was, and there's an interesting shift in archetypal resonance. Uh, this is a thing that I want to try and do more from now on. I've noticed that certain archetypes, gods and goddesses, they rise and they fall. And the big one again is Athena. Athena seems to be back in power again. There's my social media is filled with L's, which is the sign of Athena and Minerva. And also there's like a lot of emphasis on uh, protective women, women who are very protective of the tribe, because that's what Athena represents. She's the goddess of cunning and strategy and war in terms of protecting the civilians. So look out for that. Athena seems to be very strong at the moment, but they come and go in, in waves. I thought Kali would move into the ascendancy in, in, in the months between now and Christmas, but definitely not, it's Athena. And probably Kali will move into prominence next year. <clears throat> See, the Christians are now entering the Kali Yuga. And uh, what, what they hold dear is being torn apart. Uh, they're both doing it themselves and, they're, and it's also happening by... Now, I'm, I'm not pulling down the average Christian who goes to Mass or just says prayers or believes in that stuff. I'm not pulling down. I'm talking about the Christian power structure. The best thing that could ever happen to the Christians, the Christian people, is for their power structure to collapse. That would be the best thing that would ever happen to them. Now, but there's... Uh, and to just go about their lives being Christians without being evangelicals. And if they're into all that stuff, that's okay, it's fine. I don't care what you're into, it's your own business. Just don't try to convert me or force me to your ways. And uh, so I have, I have a very strong sense in me in the moment that when you're being attacked, it's like what they say, you're over the target. And the reason why paganism is being attacked now is because it's over the target. And there's a genuine terror if they have to. And that's why I believe that Pope Francis was put in the Vatican number one spot for that reason. He was put in there to fight the paganism thing. That's why he's joining forces and trying to assimilate with Islam under one gigantic Abraham, Abrahamic religion that will fight against paganism. But paganism, we can do the same thing without being strategic about it, uh, uh, forming associations or alliances we we have the the most we have the hindus on our side who are also polytheists as well so it's there's a lot to be hopeful for and uh so 2020 i think will be an interesting year if you're interested in my 2020 moss upon stones calendar the link is below if you could help me out it'd be great if you don't have the money that's okay either uh, i don't it's that's that's life but uh, uh look after yourselves and don't get too upset by this anti-pagan stuff in the media it'll pass